Good morning. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Freehold on this rainy and wet first Sunday in December, the first Sunday of the Advent season where we celebrate hope. We hope and pray that you have had a blessed and fruitful week to all those who are gathered here physically. For those who will be watching this live recording uh, due to some technical difficulties, we pray that you have had a blessed and fruitful week and we decided that you, we are thankful that you decided to join us to make us part of your worship experience this morning. As we go forth into this time of worship, I invite the choir to lead us in the choral call to worship. And now I invite you to rise as you are able and join together in the call to worship this morning. The Advent season has returned once more. We gather around, waiting for the Christ child to arrive. Restore us, O oh Lord, and let your face shine through us. Let us sing this morning's opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad. Whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored, as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Let us join together in the unison prayer. God of hope, we are grateful to be gathered together in this place once again. We rededicate ourselves to serving a world that longs for your justice and peace. Grant us the humility to receive the words of the humble and lowly. Grant us faith beyond our fear so that we may know your joy in the midst of our lament. Empower us with the Holy Spirit that our strength may be renewed and may our hearts be strangely warmed so that we might embody your love now and throughout this Advent season. Amen. finally be seated in the presence of God. Are there any announcements from the congregation this morning? We have our men's breakfast at 8.30 this morning at Gus's Diner. All are encouraged and invited to attend for a time of fellowship. Just a reminder, the poinsettia orders are due today if you have any order forms, please place them in the office as soon as possible. Well, not as soon as possible. Before you leave today or as quickly this early this week as we get that point of order out. We have our annual Christmas gifts that we will deliver to our shut-ins during this Christmas season. Volunteers are needed to deliver those gifts, so if you would like to volunteer to deliver to the shut-ins, please let myself or the office know. Uh, throughout this week, we'll make another appeal next week and get that list of volunteers together to deliver 
those wonderful and beautiful gifts to our shut-ins who are watching and worshiping with us virtually this morning. This upcoming Wednesday, we will have our next Bible study session at 7 o'clock p.m. as we explore It's a Wonderful Life Together and the Study Guide from Alan Vermeil. Um, all are invited and encouraged to attend. It is a time of great fellowship and conversation. This upcoming Thursday, there will be choir at 4.30 p.m. And following that, at 7 p.m., there will be Bunko Game Night uh, this upcoming Thursday, a time of fun, of excitement, of lots of energy. All are invited and encouraged to attend as we have a game night and a hopefully more peaceful Bunko <laughs> session this month than in previous months. If you have not played Bunko, it is great, it is exciting. There are sometimes some shenanigans, but all in all, it is a great time of fellowship. There are prizes this time, too. And there are prizes for winners, so you do not want to miss out on any of the fun and the fellowship. And you can win a prize, but you will certainly not go home without a smile on your face. Next Saturday, December 9th at 2 p.m. is a holiday brass concert where we are inviting the Princeton Brass Ensemble. So all are invited and encouraged to attend and be a part of that time of seasonal singing and hearing the songs of the season. So uh, it was fitting that you ended on our brass concert this Saturday. I know we're all used to it being on Sunday, but it's Saturday this year. Uh, I wanted to ask if anyone would be willing to volunteer to come a little early on Saturday. I'd say maybe about 20 minutes early. Um, we have buses coming from uh, Madison Crossing that I know of. Um, last year they brought two buses. Uh, with folks coming. We also reached out to uh, Monmouth Crossing and Applewood. So hopefully we will be having some folks uh, coming from there as well. Um, but I was just looking for some volunteers who would be willing to help usher in our uh, visitors to the sanctuary. Um, we do have a number of folks that come with mobility challenges and so having somebody, uh, you know, help guide them in, it's, it's a little bit of a circuitous route to get in. So um, if you are interested in doing that, please uh, see me after um, today. And uh, for those who did not read your flock notes this morning, um, I just learned uh, Friday, I delivered um, the boxes, the Christmas boxes that we stuffed Thursday night. Thank you to those who came. Um, you were a huge help in putting everything together. So the boxes were delivered, but I found out Friday that we have six more students that are adding in in the middle of next week, and I do not have boxes for them. So if there's anybody who was thinking about doing a box and time got away from you and you would like to, please, please let me know. Um, if, if it's here in the church by next Sunday, that's fine, because I'll be able to bring it in that week when I'm going to teach. So just... Little, little plea for anybody if you're interested in donating a box or two, that would be lovely. And now we'd like to invite the children forward for the children's moment. Good morning. So what is coming in 22 days? Christmas. Are you excited? Have you, you're, no one's listening. Have you thought about what you want for Christmas this year? <laughs> Sometimes we like to mention or give subtle hints about we want this or we want that. Have you given any kind of ideas? Um, I want a new telescope. You want a new telescope? No they can't hear you. Anything? <laughs> so if you could have anything in the world, what would you wish for for Christmas? You don't know? If you could wish for anything in the world, what would you want for Christmas? Peace and love. Mm. Peace. Surprisingly, no one said a billion dollars. It's always good. What do you really want? <laughs> a pony. A pony. <laughs> so we, we have all these wants and wishes because we know that this 
most wonderful time of year is coming and this most wonderful day. But also, as we start the season called Advent, we know that Jesus is coming into our world. And in 22 days, we welcome him anew. So he will bring peace, he will bring love, he will bring, hopefully, pony. For some <laughs> who win the lottery, that millions of dollars. But most of all, he brings hope and love into our hearts so that we can share it with all those around us. So as we think about Christmas, I encourage you to think about the ways that you can welcome Jesus into the world, sharing it with your friends, because he is the greatest gift of all. And it's all that we could ever want. Sounds good? Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with. In this time of Advent, we eagerly await your arrival. And so we pray, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, are there any prayer concerns from the congregation this morning? I found out this morning my uncle Mark has been suffering from a, an intestinal issue and it's caused a, a pretty significant infection. He's uh, in the hospital right now and scheduled for surgery either today or tomorrow. Prayers for his recovery. 
prayers for Uncle Mark for his for his surgery, for his procedure, for his recovery, that all might be well, both going in and coming out of the operating room. Prayers for our Baptist kin in Burma, in Ukraine, in Israel, in Palestine, all throughout the world, in the midst of turbulent times, in the midst of this Advent season. Prayers for my parents and Prayers for Manrich, who are suffering from serious medical issues. We lift up them in prayer that God might be in the midst and provide healing to their bodies and their spirits as well. Are there other prayer concerns? A couple of prayers that have come in on prayer cards. Prayers for Stephanie who's diagnosed with cancer. We pray for her treatment and her healing. And we continue to pray for Terry and Marianne as they continue to recover and recuperate prayers for strength at home. Let us now look to the Lord for a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, who we welcome anew into the world in the midst of this Advent season, we give you thanks and praise for all those who are gathered here as a part of this divine encounter with you. As we pray, come Lord Jesus, we know that you are on the way. So we stand in watchful anticipation. In our waiting, O God, bless us, keep us, watch over us. Restore us and renew us until we gather again in the fullness of your grace. Lord, you've heard the prayers of your people this morning. Prayers for our families, our immediate families, our extended families, for uncles, for parents of daughters-in-law. We pray, O oh God, for your healing touch in the operating room as they recover at home for recuperation. We lift up prayers that you be with the doctors, the nurses, those that are caring for our loved ones in these most critical and crucial of times. That there might be healing after procedures, that their bodies might be restored. May they know that loved ones are praying for them, even in these moments. But God, you know the concerns that are ailing. We pray that your hand of healing might hold them close. May your will be done, O oh God. And may they return mind, body, and strength to the fullness of all that they were. We pray for those medical diagnoses that gone, gone unspoken from our lips. 
But you know it, O oh God, and you are there in the midst. We pray that you bring healing to those situations and circumstances. May your love and your grace cover and take control. We lift up those who are at home recovering and recuperating. We continue to pray for strength, for healing, for comfort in the midnight hour. In those moments where they're feeling isolated or, or alone, speak softly and tenderly to their hearts, knowing that you are ever present with them in this time of uncertainty. We lift up, O oh God, our global family, our family in Ukraine, in Burma, in the Holy Land, where there is so much animosity, where so much violence continued, hatred, evil. We pray, O oh God, that your light shines through. In your home where the light has grown dim, where they're not celebrating the Advent season, may a world be reminded that hope is yet coming. Joy and love is on its way and peace will yet saturate the earth. We pray for your love, your protection. Call us to be people of peace. On this first Sunday of Advent, people of hope pouring into a world that is in darkness and despair. We pray, O oh God, that your will be done in our lives, in your world, so that your kingdom truly comes on earth as it is in heaven. For those situations that have gone unspoken from our lips, but you hear it from the depths of our hearts, we pray, O oh God, that you hear our cries, and according to your will, may they indeed be done. We pray all of this in the name of the one who is yet coming, the one who taught his disciples this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of giving, back a portion of God's that which is already his, I invite the ushers to come forward and lead us in this time of offering.
Let us pray. O oh God, for all that you have given us, for all that you have blessed us with, we take this time to give you back a portion of that which is already yours. Use these gifts to build up your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us continue along in our worship by singing together, Now the Heavens Start to Whisper. presence of God. As we come to hearing the words of Scripture, hear these words with me from the 80th Psalm. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh amongst themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. 
but let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of the word. As we come to this time of hearing the preach word, let us pray. O oh God, give us eyes to see anew, ears to hear afresh, a heart to be warmed and a spirit to be transformed, so that we might not leave this place ever the same. Amen. Hope. What does this four-letter word mean? One person writes, Hope is what gets you out of bed in the morning. Hope pushes the caterpillar through the cocoon and drives the salmon upstream. Hope is a horizon we head for, leaving nothing behind us but fear. And though we may never reach some of our goals, it's hope that will save us from who we once were. Another person, someone a little bit more closer to home, our executive minister, says that hope is like buying green bananas, knowing that they'll turn yellow. 
one day? What has hope meant to you throughout this calendar year? Even in the midst of this season called Advent, we will hear hopes and dreams proclaimed from children of all ages, from telescopes to somewhere, someone is going to ask for a million dollars. But what about the hopes that we don't hear because we aren't close enough to the source? What about the hopes that are muttered while clinging to fleeing breath? The hopes that spring forth through our laments, even our laments to God. This is where we find the faithful as we enter into the 80th Psalm this morning. This communal lament from the northern kingdom of Israel who are in peril. A critical situation where they have come before their last safe haven. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, they cry out, for disaster has struck anew. Our cities have been destroyed, our riches have been plundered, our people are afraid that the worst is yet to come. The one who had been with them from the very beginning is nowhere seemingly to be found. The sheep are searching and the pain intensifies as the shepherd has seemingly turned away. Give ear, O shepherd, you who lead Joseph like a flock. Our enemies are in our homes and we have nowhere else to turn. As in many other texts throughout the Hebrew Bible, the psalmist calls forth God's priors act as a reason to act in the here and now. You did it for Joseph. You did it for the tribes of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Where is that God? Where is the divine shepherd of our ancestors, the one who brought them through their difficulties? We stand here hoping that you can do it for us this time around. The congregational response, restore us, O God. Make your presence known amongst your people. Dwell with and among us that we might be saved just as in the days of old. As the second stanza of the psalm opens, the people feel that God is angry with them. Usually when bad things have happened over the course of the Hebrew Bible, it's a result of that divine anger. History shows that the northern kingdom was not always the most faithful, not always the most righteous, hence their present circumstance. Their enemies are even laughing amongst themselves. Look at the faithful. The tears of the righteous overflow in abundance. Their hearts ache beyond comprehension, but yet they still pray. Pray that their circumstances will turn around. Pray that divine hands of protection will cover them. Pray for what they cannot do in their own strength. Restore us, O God of the Sabbath. Let your face shine so that we might be saved. A prayer of hope once more from a people in peril. 
And again, as our text concludes this morning, an echo that rings from the past into the present. Restore your people, your chosen people. We know that you have done it before. Do it all again right now. We, your children, we, your flock, we need you here. We need you to come and restore us so that you might remain faithful to the covenant that you made to our ancestors, the promise you made to the generations which came before. The one who you made strong for yourself, we pray, make us strong again. Our ancestors hoped for the present, and now we hope for our future. Give us life, and we will never turn our backs on you again. They hope the third time saying it is the charm. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine so that we might be saved. The heart of the psalmist flows through many of us as we enter into this Advent season, where we feel as though the divine shepherd has been absent, while the people around us suffer where we feel as though we have held up our end of the bargain, but God's end of the promises and covenants have fallen short, where we have had our hopes dashed, our enemies ransacking and pillaging from our households, where we need a different kind of hope, this time around. Restore us, O oh God. That has been probably a prayer spoken around the world. Restore our families. Restore us into right relationships with loved ones. Restore us so that we might be able to hope and plan for the future because there is a future that we can see. But this week, as I thought about this verse, as I thought about everything that's happening in our world around us, I heard restore us being cried out in a different kind of way. I thought about the Palestinian and Israeli children who are crying out, Restore us, O God, from the midst of the conflict. I thought about the cries of Restoranios o Dios from those seeking warmth because there is no room for them in the end called freehold. I thought about the cries of restore us, O oh God, from a very specific set of people who are being turned away by the thousands as they seek a new home. I thought about the cries of restore us that are coming from drought-plagued deserts and hunger-filled bodies. I thought about the cries of restore us that are coming from our beloved family in Christ who are being persecuted because of how they were made in the image and likeness of God by other kin in Christ. I thought about the cries of restore us from those who can only see despair and darkness in their future, the ones who are hoping 
that the yellow bananas will be ripe in the future. So we cry out, along with all of the people, this morning and every morning, restore our hope. Restore us from those who wish to destroy and not build up the kingdom here on earth. We need you to come and restore us that we don't pursue riches, but indeed your righteousness. We need you to come and restore us so that we do not tear down one another for our own personal gain, but build up each other for the betterment and the gain of the whole community. We need you to come and restore us so that we might speak your truth to the world and not make our truth the gospel and then tweet Bible verses to justify it. We need you to come and restore us so that we might be not just your hands and feet but your heart in service to the world. We need you, O oh God, to come and restore us once again so that we might proclaim your great name to the nations and be your people to a world that has wondered if you have truly turned your back upon it. And what better way to talk about restoration, what better place to talk about hope than right here. Not just at church, but at this blessed table which rests before us. A table that eagerly reminds us month after month of the hope that is still yet to come for us. The hope that we, as children of God, are called to facilitate, called to plant, called to cultivate. The hope and assurance that the kingdom is yet coming and all on that day will be restored. That at this table, we meet the one who is the hope of the nations, the savior of the world. The one that is coming, not coming back, but coming. We await the Christ child and we stand in expectation of what he will bring to our world anew. May you stand amongst the faithful in the fullness of hope and welcome him with all the nations. Amen. May you rise as you are able and let us join together you are able and let us join together in singing come thou long expected Jesus
we come for the final time this calendar year to the table of the Lord. All are welcome to partake of this glorious feast, a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that awaits us in time eternal. It was on the night in which Christ was betrayed. He was around the table with his beloved friends. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And in the same manner, after giving thanks, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, poured for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. And so we come to this table, joining all the saints, ready to receive the gifts of bread and cup. I now invite the deacons to lead us in the time of communion offering as we give back a portion again to the one who sits at the table. May we receive the bread of life.
This is the bread of life. May we eat together. And now let us receive the cup of life and the cup of salvation. With everything you do, everything you say, in all times and all places, go in hope. Amen. 